Do you wear a PFD when you boat? I recently asked that question in a poll right here, and I got some really interesting results. 23% of you said you don't wear a PFD unless you're forced to do so. 31% sometimes like under rough conditions or to set a good example. 9% said only when I'm boating alone. Surprisingly, only 5% said when I think of it are doing water supports, and a whopping 33% of you said you always or almost always wear a PFD. So even though the most popular answer was always or almost always, that's still only 33% of us who wear a PFD when we're out on the water. And why is that? I got some really great comments on that poll as well, where a lot of you shared why you do or don't wear a PFD whenever you're out boating. And there's a lot of really good reasons why we don't wear PFDs. Quite frankly, in a lot of ways, wearing a PFD or a life jacket is a lot like wearing a seatbelt in a car. It's one of those things where you know it's a safe thing to do and we should do it, but there's still a lot of people who they just don't. Some of the comments I got on my poll mentioned that in some areas it is a law to wear a PFD, but here in the USA, it is not a law that we have to wear a PFD under many circumstances. I believe we're supposed to wear one when operating a personal watercraft and children are supposed to wear one. As far as the rest of us go, we just have to make sure we have enough PFDs that fit properly for everybody who is on board our vessel. They recommend we should wear one. They want us to wear them, but they're not forcing us to wear them. PFDs like this orange style right here are the most commonly recognized PFD. These are the ones that everybody buys because they're cheap and they work very well and they meet the requirements for what we have to have on our boat. You have to have a PFD on your boat for every person who is on board. So many boaters do like I do which is I have a package of these orange style PFDs on my boat at the ready, and that way I am compliant with Coast Guard regulations for having PFDs on my boat that are in good working order for everybody on board. But these PFDs are not the most comfortable thing in the world to wear, and they're actually extremely bulky and awkward. A vest style PFD like this one here is more comfortable to wear than the orange one, but it's still quite bulky. I mean, there's a lot to this and it presses up all over your torso, which when it's hot out there and humid, like it is around here a lot of times, this is very uncomfortable to wear after a while. I use this whenever I'm kayaking and I wear this sometimes when I'm in my small boat as well. If you're in your kayak, sometimes these things will ride all the way up. And people say, oh, we'll just tighten the straps tighter. Well, at some point in time, something's got to give. So these are not the most comfortable option either. And quite honestly, for many boaters, given the option of wearing something like this, or even a vest style PFD, or just taking a chance by not having one on at all, they would definitely opt to just not have a PFD on it at all. Because many times people are out boating with others and they figure if they fall in or something happens, they can put on a PFD at that time or somebody can jump in and help them out. Much like wearing seatbelts in a car, wearing a PFD for a lot of people they look at as a very personal thing. The only person they're putting in danger by not wearing one is themselves because they look at it as I'm not putting anybody else in any danger if I don't wear one. So sure, we think about wearing a PFD as a very personal choice. If we choose not to wear one, that's the risk we're taking. But let me relay a story that happened out here in the Chesapeake Bay just this last winter. There was a very experienced boater and fisherman who liked to go out by himself regularly and do a lot of fishing from his boat. He was out fishing by himself and he never came back. They found his boat and they never found him. And for his family, they still are looking for closure. Him not wearing a PFD has made it hard for his family to be able to grieve properly. And it's one of those things where we think a lot of times about ourselves and our own views on safety and whether or not we care. But sometimes it's thinking about others that's important. Ideally, you want to find a PFD that is comfortable to wear. Matter of fact, the Coast Guard even says the best personal flotation device is the one that you will actually wear. So this year, 
I decided to purchase these right here. These are self-inflating PFDs that are basically just a couple of thin straps. Of course, PFDs like this cost a lot more than the simple orange one and more than a basic vest style PFD. However, my thinking is that by having this type of PFD, I'm more likely to actually wear my PFD. The interesting thing about these particular life jackets is that they are auto inflating and they actually have a CO2 cartridge in them, which whenever that cartridge gets wet, it will automatically inflate the life jacket to be able to help keep me afloat. That's kind of a cool feature. However, of course, something like that has to be maintained, checked periodically, and once it's been activated, then you have to spend money to buy a replacement CO2 cartridge to be able to reuse this PFD again in the future. And finally, the last style of PFD is one that looks more like a fanny pack than a PFD. Now, a person's much more likely to wear this when they're out on the boat. However, the real disadvantage of this type of PFD is that it requires you to actually be alert enough to slip it over your head when it automatically inflates. So the idea is that you have the fanny pack around your waist, and if you fall into the water, when that gets activated, it will inflate a PFD that you need to slip over your head. So it's a very suitable PFD, but you have to be conscious and be able to slip this over your head. And that's one of the disadvantages of that type of PFD. So let's look at the pros and cons of each type. Those big, ugly orange ones. Well, they're very, very inexpensive and they're very effective. The fact that they have a big pillow to help hold your head upright in the water is a huge help, but they're very impractical. You're not going to wear those whenever you're walking around on your boat. The vest style, the pros with those is they're a decent PFD. Uh, you can wear them on your body and they don't stick out as much as the other ones. And they're a vest style. So some of them even have some pockets and things like that, providing a little bit of utility. But they're still bulky and they, to be worn correctly, they have to be pressed all around your torso. So whenever you're wearing a lot of clothing, if it's cooler weather, that might be just fine. But when it's hot and humid out there, a vest style is very uncomfortable to wear. And I usually can't wait to get out of my kayak and just pull that thing off whenever I come up on land because it's just so uncomfortable to wear that vest style one for a long time. The auto inflating one is much more comfortable to wear, although you're still wearing something. One of the cons is it's expensive. They're not cheap. Many of these auto inflating style start at over $100 each. The fanny pack style is obviously the easiest to put on. It's not cumbersome. It's not awkward. It's just something you strap around your waist. But the big con with that in my mind is that you have to be alert. If you get knocked unconscious or you go in the water head first, you may not be able to get your wits about you to be able to pop that over your head in an emergency situation. So what kind of PFD would you prefer to wear? What kind do you wear out there on your boat? Or are you one of those people who still doesn't wear a PFD? Let me know in the comments below. And earlier I mentioned the Coast Guard. Here's a video where the Coast Guard came on my boat and inspected my boat to see how well I did. Take a look at this video next. Right here. 